Good morning. It is day three of our six day Salmon River rafting trip. Um, we are here at a camp called Hancock. Looks like folks are up and stirring just down the way. We got a big river day today in terms of mileage. Uh, we got about 23 miles to do uh, to our next camp, 23 miles. And this little video, I thought we'd talk a little bit about um, some of the processes that happen along the river. We were on a nice little sandbar over there, um, but you can see down here in the foreground, all the rocks. And there's actually a really cool orientation of the rocks here. You might be able to pick out that all the rocks are kind of laid over like dominoes in the downstream direction to the left. And this is something called imbrication. Uh, we see this sometimes in rocks where gravels and cobbles are cemented together in a conglomerate and it's just the most preferred orientation is the currents moving this direction here the rocks get kind of laid over on their side and pushed over and it's also a great spot to to look at some of the the different rock types that we find in the salmon river that show us a little bit of uh what kinds of rocks are in the mountains upstream so we can come along here and look here at this uh this looks like an andesite or maybe a day site some of these big crystals of feldspar in here little black specks of hornblende right next to it's a, a granite uh, and so these cobbles are just really well exposed in here showing us a little bit of the the rock types we see further upstream let's see if we can find let me move up here. Um, and so all this would be deposited, the Salmon River's undammed, and so it would have much higher flows during spring runoff. And these cobbles and all these big gravels here are what are called bed loads. So all this stuff gets actually transported during higher flows. And these rocks along the bed of the stream are rolling and skipping and, uh, maybe uh, uh, jumping a little bit downstream. They're smashing into other rocks. And so really this reflects sort of the strongest rock types in the drainage because they're all pretty well rounded and they've been rounded by all these collisions knocking off the sharp corners. So if, you're, if your river system has softer rock types like a sandstone or a, a shale, uh, maybe a limestone, something like that, those rocks are gonna hit these harder, more typically crystalline rocks and get pretty much pulverized into smaller pieces. And so, um, again, we can see some really nice uh, andesites in here, um, quite a few granites. So these andesites here from the Chalice Volcanics, the 50 million year old, um, about you know Eocene age uh, Chalice Volcanics. There are a lot of granites in here. Uh, here's a metamorphic with some, with some dikes cutting through it. Um, there's a, a nice, a metamorphic gneiss right there with the banding in it. And then there's also a lot of uh, quartzites. And quartzites, like this one here, uh, tend to be quite resistant as well. Uh, these are metamorphosed sandstones. Um, so we'll walk down a little bit further. Um, there's a nice little spot just down here where there's a spring that comes into a little sandy area and creates a nice little geologic feature as well so we'll head down this way one of the small rapids that we'll run today today we have yeah 23 miles to go and we'll hit some of the some of the big rapids on this section of river i think we've got several class threes uh, a class four called big mallard where there's some technical maneuvering that needs to take place. If we look over here, we can see there's much bigger rocks at the head of a drainage up here. It's a little hard to see. Um, and so these rocks have all been carried down by debris flows. So flash floods in this small little canyon have carried these rocks out, at least to this point, and at other times probably pushed some rocks into the channel to make these small rapids here. But you can see here, we've got a, a little section of sand in this little embayment here. And 
there is actually a little bit of water coming out right here. So you can see the water moving the sand. So this is a small little spring. Another little section there, just a little spring seeping out through the sand, um, creating this little embayment. And so the sand is completely saturated. And this is essentially what is what most people would call and Hollywood would call this is quicksand. But unlike the quicksand we see in Hollywood movies, this isn't going to suck you in. Um, you'd have to really work at it to get trapped here. So I'll kind of illustrate here kind of how this works. It's it's more or less just liquefied um, sand. And so if you just kind of stand in it and just start working your feet, you can kind of get stuck a little bit, uh, but it would take quite a bit of work. But this is basically water that is um, pushing apart the sand grains. And so there's just no cohesion at all to the sand uh, it, because it's so wet and so liquefied. Here's another good spot right here where you can just kind of work your feet into it. And I could get stuck here if I really wanted to. But um, yeah, just kind of a cool little spot with the spring coming into the river here in the sand and just kind of seeping in. Again, kind of a close look there at all the little grains. So even though the spring's moving very slowly, um, it has sufficient velocity to actually move some of these sand grains down. If we look down here, we can kind of see the sand grains being deposited. So it's almost like a little stream. It's actually producing uh, depositional patterns that we might see in a delta or an alluvial fan. So kind of nice spot. So I wanted to do uh, this video for today, day three. We'll do some other ones if we find some cool things downstream. So hopefully you're enjoying sharing a little, little view and a little, some of the geology and the scenery of the beautiful Salmon River at sunrise here in central Idaho.